Good evening and welcome to Showtime TV production. I'm your host, Omar Rashid. Uh, this is part six, a look at politics in 2020. And I have a very special guest. Uh, really needs no introduction. Everyone knows this gentleman. Uh, he is running for city council at large. We have Elder Tyrone Johnson. Good evening, Elder Ty. Good evening, Omar. It's good to see you, my friend. And, uh, likewise, it's, good to see you. and it's good to be a guest on Showtime. All right. You know, uh, Elder Ty, I think last time you and I, I interviewed you, I think it was four years ago, when you, you were running for uh, uh, city, city, city council at large um, uh, four years ago. So um, what, what made you want to decide to uh, run again for the second time? Well, as you know, uh, Omar, I, I've had an interest in the uh, electoral politics, but I really wasn't motivated the last time to win. I wanted folks to know that uh, we had a cadre of folks who were qualified to run and would run. But over the years, I, I've grown very um, frust frustrated with what appears to be uh, the dysfunctionalism of uh, city council. And um, I, I'm just, I'm believing in my heart and I've been praying about it. I've been talking with a lot of folks that um, what I bring to the table can and will make a difference as far as um, the leadership, the unification of uh, the, the uh, council and this, the ability to connect, I think, in areas that they've been unable to connect with to uh, impact the city on a greater level. Okay, so, so um, do, do you see yourself, what, what do you see yourself doing differently this time around in, in terms of campaigning? Are you campaigning much harder? Or are you doing different strategies? Um, what exactly are you doing this time around? Well, I'm doing, uh, this time around, I, I started with my mind. Okay. I wrap my mind around what it means to race and what it means to be in a race. Um, and as you know, there's three seats for the Wilmington City Council that are available. However, the competition is fierce. Uh, you have a lot of good folks out there wanting to serve and rightly so. Um, different for me uh, campaigning is uh, um, I started late and um, you know, I was inspired by my bishop, inspired by several, just several folks who just kept coming. So I jumped in, and but I was late. So I did some things like got some signs. Uh, we looked at the color of the signs. We looked at putting my face on the signs uh, so the folks would have that recognition piece going, uh, the facial recognition. There's two kinds of recognition, paper and personal. And I'm relying on the personal because I do not have the capacity that other folks have. And I've um, said that I'm not gonna take corporate money I'm not going to be unbought and unbossed. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be a disruptor or uncooperative. I just don't want to go in um, wanting to serve and needing to serve the people of Wilmington, be white, black, brown, it doesn't matter, and can't do it because of some special interest or somebody has uh, financed my campaign. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's deal with some. So hold, oh, hold. And before you hit that next one, let me just tell you, uh, I've been riding around, man, having fun. I've oh, been yeah, in, I see. In, in the <laughs> suburban. <laughs> That's different. That's different. I've never done anything like that okay, before. Got you. We got some big signs on the suburban, and every now and then I pop out the sunroof. And I don't know how legal that is, but it's fun. <laughs> and I take yeah. the bullhorn and I introduce myself. Uh, and in neighborhoods that um, they probably had never heard of a time. Well, they may have read about me in the newspapers and all that, right. but just for me to have that direct touch is different. Right, it's different. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I drive around the city and I, I see you on telephone poles. I, I see the signs <laughs> everywhere. I mean, that's the size. Elder size is, is really. I'm doing, doing it different, Omar. It, it, I'm doing it, it, it you're different. Assertive. You've been much more assertive, I see. Okay, yes, uh, let's let's deal with some issues. Um, Public safety, um, you know, people, man, I just saw on uh, Facebook yesterday where 11 year old was shot, 11 year old girl was shot, um, maybe about a month ago, uh, two teenagers, at least one or two teenagers were yes. killed in Maryland Avenue area. I mean, people are really concerned. And even years ago, I would hear people say, look, man, I, I ain't coming to the city woman for Delaware, it's, it's too dangerous. So what is your agenda in terms of uh, public safety? Uh, that's a good question. You know, public safety has always been a pet peeve of mine. Um, years ago, we, we created something called CTAC, Churches Take a Corner. 
And many people thought that CTAC was just an evangelical arm of, uh, for the churches and the faith community, but it wasn't. In essence, we, we were, uh, pioneered uh, the formation of the Hope Commission. And the Hope Commission was supposed to be dealing with gun violence and, and it changed midstream, start dealing with reentry. So that kind of left a void there, a gap. I backed up because we had a lot of folks on the streets, uh, Pastor D, um, uh, Prayer Chain, um, Key Booker, and these are good folks, man. So I kind of backed up and began to look at the corporate connection and to look at uh, how we could impact folks uh, uh, because the dynamics were changing. Uh, it, before we used to look at um, who was committing the, 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 the shootings and we had like two town felons, uh, folks uh, who, uh, who, who had a gun. And then we looked at the hours. It used to be from like anywhere from two to like eight. And now it's like, uh, I think it's maybe uh, three, four, you know, to 11 or 12, one o'clock. And it just happens. Um, the first thing we have to do, uh, like I said, when we created the Hope Commission, we were blessed to uh, hear from a sister, Dr. Coleman. She's passed since, but she told us the first thing is an air attack. Now, hear me close, an air attack. And by that, I mean, we simply cannot afford to allow one baby, one person to be shot and there not be an outreach from the community. We cannot afford to become complacent about people's uh, lives. That's, that's a no-no. So the first thing is someone has to call the leaders together. Someone has to call, and, and I'll be glad to do that, call. Uh, and these leaders are not the traditional leaders that we may think. There's a whole new cadre of leaders out there, young folks, who really want to get involved. I don't think they have the experience to kind of know you know, what to do and how to go at it. That's where folks like you and I come in. So we gather them and we begin to tell them, hey, listen, let's start speaking to the single um, parents, uh, the single parent households. Let's start deputizing some of these young people and let's not sell them a, a whole lot of hype. Let's show them some real economic opportunities that has their name on it, provided that they can accomplish certain benchmarks. That changes the game completely. Then we have to look at legislation. I would. There's got to be some laws that says up front in person, look, you cannot shoot unarmed people. Police. I'm talking about the police. Right. You cannot uh, use the chokehold. All of these things have to be looked at and they have to be dealt with in, in, a, in, in a fair way and in a balanced way. Um, are we talking about defunding the police? I don't think we have to defund the police. I think we have to redirect some of the resources so that the community gets a hand up and stop looking at us like we're begging all the time. Um, now, that's just part of it. The other part is uh, whoever is head of public safety on that public safety committee definitely leads to look at uh, WPD, Wilmington Police Department. We have to look at deployment and uh, we have to look at hiring practices. How many um, black officers do we have patrolling 19801, 802, 805? That's where the problems are. And those are where the deficits are for the most part. And the reason I say they should be black uh, because you have to be culturally sensitive in order to get the kind of results we're looking for. And I don't know that we have that. So we need to take a real look at that. And then we need to return to people like yourself and different teams that would meet the graduating class before they're turned loose. And we would talk with them from a community uh, perspective. And maybe that could be handled through uh, the folks who uh, citizen review board or whatever, you know, it's not hard. It's really not hard. But these folks would challenge the new cadets to see, hey, are you going in this to serve, to protect and serve? Are you going in there because this badge gives you a false sense of authority? And because this is real power, a gun and a badge is real power. So we cannot afford to sanction you 
if your mindset is that of someone who needs to uh, keep your thumb on people's foreheads in order to um, get them to do what you need them to do. There's other ways that are effective, more effective, and there's other um, uh, models out there that we can look at. Some of the stuff I want to uh, uh, look at uh, alongside of that, you, you must have an economic plan that is transparent and uh, you have all the uh, things in place you need as far as your uh, people who's sitting on the board, what names, because mm-hmm. this is Delaware is a small town, a small state. Wilmington is even smaller. So if indeed you do not have the right folks on your board and in that mix, then you will not get the resources that's needed. That's just the way it is. And that's what I've seen. And uh, so our young people have, uh, we don't have um, daycares. Uh, while, uh, years ago, we did a, we partnered with the Office of Prevention. You may remember this. And we brought Office of Prevention, Probation, Parole, Wilmington PD together. This is how we got the shootings down. We opened up um, the uh, recreation centers in the schools after hours. So the children would have an opportunity to stay over. So when they got home, right, we offered food, we offered uh, some games, we offered basketball, recreation, just alternative activities to keep them off the streets. Now, I know we're living in COVID. I know that. And I know that it's a challenge. But it's not hard to do some stuff. You know, you can take the key players in, in neighborhoods. We did a men on the block. So you 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 deputize somebody on every block and that person becomes responsible for the young people, checking on them, seeing how they're doing, reporting to the responsible people so that we can ensure that, you know, they're growing at a healthy rate and not getting shot and killed. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely, that definitely. You, you mentioned the word economics. Um, Wow, because it's COVID-19, as you just mentioned, uh, many people lost their jobs. I mean, the, the Department of Labor, I mean, they, they, the people started uh, filing for unemployment. I mean, they, they were so backed up and people really couldn't complete the application process. Um, so as a city council at large, um, how will you go about uh, bringing jobs back or bringing more jobs in terms of improving the economic conditions in the city of Wilmington? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would look at um, folks in every d- district who have small business ideas. Uh, normally city council fun- uh, uh, will function around three areas, housing, uh, finance, and um, public safety. So, you know, I would definitely look at, all right, how do we create streams of income that are separate from taxation? and separate from um, the, the normal ways that uh, they, 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 they raise monies. And one of the, some of the things I've been working on is a piece called the African National Day of Assembly, okay. which is modeled after Peter Spencer and his, his work. Uh, Peter Spencer, as you know, is the father of the um, big quarter movement, August quarter. Yes. What impressed me about Peter Spencer everywhere in 1812, 1813, he built 37 churches. But here's the kicker. After, I mean, alongside of each church, he built a school, right? So now we are charged to pick up where he left off. Dr. King says, um, America wrote us a check and signed it in sufficient funds. So we have to go back and say, listen, you know, irrespective as to what the dominant culture thinks of us as a people, we think of ourselves as a great people. But if indeed we look at Delaware's role in slavery, right, based on the intent of House Resolution 10, the apology, and go back and say, let's create a redevelopment fund. You already said you were sorry. But sorry alone does not um, address the years of pain and systematical denial looped with racism and and police brutality. It done, you know, no one came and and said, would you like some counseling? No one came to us. I don't know about you, nobody came to me. And no one said, you know, as a result, uh, would you like to start a business? (laughs) Because, you know, it's just not so. 
when you look at that, that's the beginning of resources that's outside of what we're accustomed to. Now, I've been also talking with some folks in Liberia and um, across the continent, simply because we got to stop thinking local and we have to think global. Global as far as uh, philanthropic organizations, why aren't we reaching out to these, uh, um, you know, corporations, I mean, these, these large philanthropic organizations who give money to Philly, they give money to Baltimore, they give money, you know, Maryland, they give money to Jersey. Mm -hmm. They ride right through here going to DC. But I don't know that anyone ever says, hey, get off the train for a minute. Let me walk you around, meet some of the folks in Wilmington and invest in Wilmington. Right. I don't know. I haven't seen anything like that, man. And it's not a hard, it's not a heavy lift. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, you know, when I interviewed you four years ago, we talked about housing. And one of the things we talked about was, and, and nothing has changed since the last four years. Um, we look at Riverside, there's still border up homes. You look at East Side, there's still border up homes. I mean, uh, by last month, I rode by uh, East Side and uh, I looked at Bennett Street. Man, I see numbers of uh, watered up houses. So it seems like Riverside and, and Eastside are hit hard with watered up houses. Um, man, they're right in the city of Wilmington. Um, what would you say to to address the the water up housing and, and along with the vacant properties in the city of Wilmington? Well, it's interesting you should say that. Uh, to the credit of uh, our friend uh, um, um, Logan Herring, who is the grandson of uh, uh, Otis Herring, great leader. Uh, and builder, uh, uh, developer. He wasn't a developer per se, but you know he built that uh, the high rise over on Market Street. So there's a foot, there's a footprint there. Um, Logan has done the same. He's I think he's got programs going on and what is Prestige Academy, and they have begun. Uh, I think they've broken the ground for what is called Reach Riverside. Now Reach Riverside is supposed to reflect the same thing we did over in. Um, East Lake Village. Remember, East Lake Village used to be the bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was public housing, and and since we built that, uh, and I say we because I was just privileged to um, get the first um, demolition contract, and in that, I was able to set up a training class in the Muslim Al uh, uh, Masjid Al Kalthar, and uh, one of the first people in the class, man, you, you're not gonna believe this. I was looking at a picture because it was all about um, how do you create income? How do you, you get these folks money in their hands so that they could rehab a house, so that they could afford uh, a house, you know, a, a mortgage or a rent payment. One of the first people in the class, man, was um, Captain Fahim. <laughs> he started out in that class and uh, once he, 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 he got in the class, he got the skills, he said, you know what? I'm gonna go on trial for the force. And look at what he did. He did well. Um, there's a program called Community Reinvestment Act of, I think it's 94, I'm not sure. Okay. Or 2004, I think it's 94. Uh, that's how far it goes back. And this is a fund that was set up that, that, that the banks have and they put it aside because the government uh, made them or for, compel, forced them to reinvest in the community because of uh, redlining, because of the, they, they had uh, double charges, triple charges, quadruple charges and some with interest on loans and things like that. Government stepped in and said, you gotta give that money back. Well, we haven't been good stewards to say, okay, where, is the Community Reinvestment Act. I know we built um, DCRAP. I know we built a couple of parking lots, but I've really not seen an investment in housing like I think we can. Uh, I think the corporations are ready. I think if we go with a plan and if we uh, uh, have some responsible people, we can get some of them houses uh, online and they could, um, definitely be used to attack our homeless problem that we have in the city. Yeah. That's one think, way. Right, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, I, I, work, I work in mental health. I work in outpatient mental health. Um, okay, you, you, good for you. You, you, you. You're the first part of political candidate that I'm gonna ask this question. Um, you know, most most 
in the city of Wilmington, most uh, substance abuse uh, mental health programs are funded by the state. This is some may be private. Um, do, do, do you see the city of Wilmington uh, playing a role in addressing uh, mental health and um, substance abuse issues? I, I, I do. I don't know what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be surprised if we're not doing anything. Certainly we need to do more and we mm -hmm. can do more. And I say that because of the rise in mental health and the rise in um, street drugs that we're seeing. Um, we're not equipped. We had the same problem with the heroin. Uh, years back, a couple of years back, uh, there was a serious heroin epidemic. So, um, uh, the heroin uh, had gotten pure. You know, folks were used to getting uh, like, 80 some percent said, you know, heroin. Then they all of a sudden they jumped up to 97%. And then they started mixing the fentanyl. People start dying. Well, we should have created a task force then that would serve as prevention and be ready for a preemptive strike once we started seeing things. Now that's only on the using side and the selling side. There's also a piece on treatment. When we were getting folks to um, treatment, you know, through CTAC, we put more people in treatment than anybody in the state of Delaware, bar none. Philly, Baltimore, Maryland, DC, we were sending people everywhere. Um, and I say that because we sent so many people to Philly, they called me up there and the secretary up there said, hey, what is going on in Delaware? They called Delaware complaining that we had put so many people up and then people stay because what happens is, and I didn't know this, when folks get clean, right, then they go on to public uh, assistance. Uh -huh. And it's not, the money is allocated for a certain number of folks. Well, our folks was blowing that number out of the water. So they tracked us down. Right, but right. the good thing about it, Omar, is once the Secretary of uh, Department of Human Ser Health and Human Services called me in, they said, look, Ty, we're going to give you, we, we called some folks, we're going to give you 15 beds at uh, AI DuPont. We got 15 beds for you at Christiana. We yeah. got 15 beds for you at um, St. Francis. We won't take nobody to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I was smart back then, I would have saw the mental health piece coming on and then begin to look at, do we have enough qualified individuals from our community who are equipped to deal with this mental health surge? And I don't think we did. Do we have enough facilities to house these folks so that the, um, they, when, they, when, they, when they integrate back into the community, it's not like they become the eyesore because they're coming from an environment where folks are constantly taking care of them and they, they're keeping them on track with the meds. So when they come out, then, then, then the community and the neighborhood embraces them. Does that make sense at all? I don't, I don't know that we're doing it. We certainly, the city really needs to lead that, man. Right, right, because we got a lot, a lot of problems in, in the city. Does that definitely, definitely. Um, you, you touched on this point um, in, in your opening uh, statement. Um, City Council, I, I, I watched the meetings on um, not every single meeting, but, but here and there. And every single meeting that I watched, that there, there's conflict. As, as a matter of fact, I, I think it's become personal among some city council members. I, I recall um, watching one meeting made about a month or two ago, and two city council members were going back and forth calling each other slaves. Um, so if, <laughs> if, 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 yeah, if Dr. Tyrone Johnson was to be, be elected as city council at large, how will you go about having an effective relationship with the other city council members? I mean, you're not gonna agree on every single thing, but at least agree to disagree and not take personal shots. I mean, some of those shots are even put on social media uh, over the years, so. Um, well, yeah. that's a good question, Omar. Um, first of all, it's not in my character to beat up on people like that. Um, and I'm not accusing nobody of beating up on anybody. It just It just comes across like that. Um, and that's just some people's style, but mm -hmm. I think, um, for me, I can't, I don't do that. Um, what I'd rather do, you and I need to talk mm -hmm. offline 
and we need to do it before we come to the meeting. I think part of the problem is most of those folks have jobs. Should I be elected? When I'm elected, I'll be full time. You can call Tyrone. <laughs> so I would say to my, 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 my counterparts, let me help you to help us and us being the people. Now, however I can help you help us, let's get at it. Let's not get on council floor and name bash or that sort of thing. That's not gonna happen. God is bigger than that. And those of us who are called to his stewardship ought to reflect that. Um, it's, it's just not the place. And we gotta, you know, we just gotta do it different, man. Definitely, definitely. We're, we're, we're living in tense times right now in terms of the relationship between police officers and African-American men in particular. There was George Floyd. Uh, you talked about the knee on the neck. He passed away. Now there's a guy named Mr. Blake who got shot seven times and then now he's paralyzed. Woo! In, yes, in, sir. In, in the city of Wilmington, they had uh, a band ban during the McDowell case. Uh, like the people have been protesting and, and marching on a regular basis here in the city of Wilmington as well as other places across the United States of America and even the world. Uh, what, what is your take on the, the, the Black Lives Matter movement? I love the Black Lives Matter movement. I think it's necessary um, to address some of the, um, um, the supremacist attitudes, the, um, the racial injustices that currently is, exist and the systematic, uh, systemic uh, things that deny us full quality of life as it pertains to uh, this great democracy that we live in. Uh, Black Lives Matter uh, uh, is needed uh, in my book. I support it 100%. Um, I think we need uh, an agenda. I don't necessarily um, subscribe to flags, raising the flags and that kind of stuff because I'm not one for symbols. I'm, you know, uh, the folks in uh, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, probably would accept my flag the red, black, and green flag, but they would probably feel better if we did something to address the, 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 the millions they lost and the billions by now. If you count the dollars that was lost from then to now, it's probably in the billions, man. Mm -hmm. So find those families and say, you know, this is the only city that America has ever bombed and we're gonna do something to help you all rebuild. So in Wilmington, Delaware, if you know that the East Side was our most thriving community until you begin, uh, um, certain factions begin to split it up and bust it up. We lost businesses. We lost uh, camaraderie. There was an attack on the family. And, uh, you know, you can look at the CDC report. Uh, you can look at uh, Arthur Garrison's report. You can look at the Empowerment Enterprise Zone. It's all there, man. And you study the study and do what those in, in those academians do. You know, create a study, then go back and study the study. And it's gonna tell you the same thing. You know, JP Morgan Chase just came out with a disparity study. In that disparity study, it says that the average medium white income is so far ahead of black folks in Wilmington, that if we were to start wealth building, you and I for our family tomorrow with a plan, it would take us 94 to 240 years to catch up with the medium household income of whites. That is a fact, man. That's not something that, so Black Lives Matter could embrace things like that. That could become a part of the agenda. Hey, if you know this, then let's begin to talk about how we rebuild our communities with some tangible assets. You know, you know, Reverend Ty, you're, you're one of the few individuals that's running for a political office that, 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 that I know, I'm not, I'm not saying you're the only one, but, but me on a personal level that, that I know that you've been out in the streets uh, serving the people with CTAC, IMAC, uh, brother to brother. Um, how did you get involved in wanting to help others in the street? How, how did you get involved in Want to be involved in the community in terms of helping other people. When, when did that start? Was that was it 10 years or 20 years? Well, years? well, I've been doing this in Wilmington 
for at least um, 27 years. SeaTac was started in 19. It's funny, I had this conversation with uh, Dr. Livingston, the mother church. He, he reminded me, we started SeaTac in 1994 at his church. He was the uh, pastor of Ezeon, Mount Carmel. Oh, yeah. And we had over 40 something pastors at night to go out the streets. Um, that was the beginning of my um, public, I guess, giving back and, and, and doing what I did. But it stemmed from my work in North Carolina um, with Dr. E.B. Turner, who was a statesman and past president of the North Carolina Baptist Association who was connected to Charlie Rose in Washington. So I began to understand how this, uh, uh, the secular world interacted with the spiritual world and how powerful that was. So I brought that with me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I just couldn't execute because I was getting high. You know, I wasn't, uh, thank God no K2 was around or none of that crazy stuff, but you know, I was smoking the pipe. So, you know, I, I found out that I was allergic to, to drugs, because every time I did them, I broke out somewhere. <laughs> so God cleaned me up in 90, and I made him a promise that if he would clean me up, help me stay clean, I would give back. Part of my give back was the forming of M&MT, &MT, Magic Minds Together. And we would, about 18 of us in recovery, we would go around and we would actually um, do what is called therapeutic drama. We worked with Ray Avery. We worked with Arthur Bo uh, Art Boswell over um, people's settlement. We would go into fairs. We would go into um, the prisons. And, and what I did was we, we created these skits and I would look for local talent and I would take these fellas. I wanted, you remember the group for you? Uh, wow. Reed, Fred, Frederick Reed over okay, Reed's Refuge so. Center. Okay, yeah, they had a yeah. little, little group, little singing group, right? Okay. And them boys could get it going. <laughs> and we would go in and get look. We would get a give a message, and then we say we brought these superstars from all the way from Riverside, and right, they right. do the little doo wop man, and it had an impact on these people like you never would believe. Then we created something called uh, "No Banging, Just Hanging with God," right, and we right, challenged yeah. these folks. You remember that? Yeah, seven yeah. days. Let's see you. You supposed to be a big man. Let's see you go seven days without cursing. Let's see you go seven days without shooting, go seven days, right, without gang banging. At the end of this, I want you to sign this pledge, head over to uh, Price's Park. We had John P. Key over there, free hot dog stuff for the kids. It was big. And right. we would get Young Ibn and, and, and Yorkie D and Kenny G and these boys going to the schools and they would rap and I have a little DJ mixing up, get their attention. And man, look, when I started doing that stuff and I saw how uh, uh, God was opening doors and the young people were receiving it, man, I was just so blessed. So I was blessed to be in service. Not to talk about the work that my wife was doing with the pal. She was uh, the secretary. So, okay. you know, this job, this little piece here, that community stuff almost cost me my house, man. And I've lost a couple cars because you know, grants, you don't get grants and, you know, the grants come and go and all that. And then you get tired of just begging folks for, for crumbs and that sort of stuff. So I've been through all of that, you know what I mean? And you learn, you know, what to do, what not to do and that sort of thing. And it helps you, it helps you to maintain character and integrity. So, um, you know, I just feel like I'm equipped to do this thing. Right. That's, I that's, hope that's, I answered you know, the question, man. That's yeah, how I yeah, got yeah. started. That's kind of how I got started. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. You know, you know, I, I was coming off 95 North one day going to Concord Avenue, look on the left hand side where Ford paper is. I seen so many signs, political signs, right? So so then, then I thought to myself, you know, yourself as well as, well as others who are running, you, you, you're so busy you're concentrating on your own campaign. Uh, have you ever taken the time to say to yourself, uh, who, who are the candidates that, that, that who are the other candidates that I'm going to vote for? September the 15th? Because you, you, you're so into your own political uh, race that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought about, um, you know, uh, folks, you know, um, and, I, you know, I, I, I like, um, you know, definitely going to uh, go with Joe and Camilla. To, you know, I, I got to go with Joe and, uh, and Camilla. I'm very close to the Biden family. Um, Joe 
I tell you, can I tell you a funny story about Joe oh, and sure. I? Sure. Um, Joe, uh, although I went to his mom's funeral, it was my first time meeting Barack when um, Joe's mom died. Okay. Um, you know, Barack was in line. He gave me the finger and did it to me because, you know. <laughs> and but joe looked at me crazy when i went to the reception like where y'all find this guy and the reason he said that is because when we were uh break um doing the tribute over at east lake village joe was there used to be a guy uh who used to report all our news his name was ted reeves he worked for the scoop newspaper and ted insisted that i take a picture with joe and i said man i don't know joe and I'm not taking no pictures. Joe gave me the craziest look on bar. He said like, who are you? Telling me you're not taking no picture. And I didn't take the picture. But Joe never forgave me for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the blessing is, I'm, I'm real close to Bo. Bo gave me cufflinks, man. When he was attorney general, he said, Ty, I want you to have these. Uh, Hunter is real. I'm real close with Hunt. I'm real close with Ashley. I mean, we're personal friends. So I know what Joe can do and Kamala do. I'm going with Chris Coons. I'm going with Carver. I'm going with uh, Lisa Blunt, um, Rochester, sent for Congress simply because these folks have, I think, have done a tremendous job. I'm, I'm proud of Chris Coons and his position with uh, in the nation and his position with the Democratic Party. He he delivers and he can be trusted. Um, you know, I, I'm going I, I'm going to go with John Carney. I'm going to go with um, Matt Meyer. I'm going to go with um, Beth. And locally, I think I'm going to go with uh, <clears throat> Velda Jones Potter. Um, I'm going to go with, um, you know, that's, I think that's it. Oh, county, for the county, I think I'm going to go with poverty. Um, zero poverty. Um, you know, these are folks that I've seen do in, in action right, right. and no one can tell me about what they do because I know these folks and I, I have an opportunity to see folks up close and uh, personal. It's like Matt Meyer. I know Matt Meyer. I know his commitment. So no matter what folks say, I know this guy believes in what he's doing. So, you know, can, uh, you know, he needs to be county exec. Right. Yeah, now in terms of environmental and education, uh, do, do you have any agendas regarding those two? Um, education, I just want, um, I, I, I'd like for us to really get our head around the uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I normally leave the whole education piece to people like Tony Allen, uh, mm -hmm. Jay Street, um, couple other folks, Devin Henson, who are advocates and they are real familiar. Now I've done it. I've done a lot of that, but I am not, you know, my head is not around it. So I don't pretend to know what I don't know. Um, education, I had a lot to do with uh, Maury Academy, getting it reopened. I did not agree with the direction we went in the second time with computers. I think we're going through the same thing. Uh, now that the children are separated from the physical building, um, we're having to challenge them to do virtual stuff. Now, when you talk about social media, they're virtual. When you talk about lessons, that's a whole nother lift. And that's where you need folks like you and I and other folks to kind of check on them and, and make it a fun experience and make it worthwhile. Does that make sense? So the environment, I have not dealt with a whole lot, only in terms of um, keeping an eye on golf trainer. Um, now, we need clean air, man. And I'm, you know, I'm a cancer survivor, so I am definitely, you know, on that. We got too much uh, uh, contamination in our soil, too many brown fields. We 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 can do something with this stuff. We really can, man. We, uh, it's just too much cancer for me in this state, too much. Um, uh, we need to uh, look at, um, you know, uh, 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 what's polluting our air. These conversations hardly ever come up because we get so distracted. You know, if you can lift, but, your, camera, if you can lift, your, lift up your camera, it's, it's, you only see it half the space. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that better? 
Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. all right. So, so, so you're, you're, you're knocking on the doors, you're, you're campaigning. And um, what were some of the, maybe the top two, three, four issues that the residents are addressing with you in terms of improving the quality of, in the city of Wilmington, Delaware? Um, I'm hearing a lot of folks, a lot of folks are very concerned about uh, the shootings. Right. So uh, you remember Dr. Um, Dr. Rivers came here, he told me, you got to get the child safe, get them educated, get them a job if you want them to be successful. And I don't think we're doing that. Um, so folks are saying, look, they're not in school, they're not safe. Come on, man, we can do better. Um, the, the other thing I'm hearing is there's no real help for single mothers. And being that um, the environment has changed, our thinking needs to change. If you already have a single parent who is working one, two, two and a half jobs, just to survive. She's not living. She's trying to survive. And now her children are out of school. So you have daycare and all these other uh, uh, unforeseen costs or hidden costs that nobody talks about. So we really got to pay attention to that. And we got we to gotta find a way to help these folks, man. And, and, you know, the city's not a social service agency. I'm not saying that by the long shot. But unless we look at it, um, Mayor Baker showed me a um, and gave me a diagram one time. And in that diagram, you know, it addressed a lot of the stuff that people were talking about. You know, how do we get some help with our young people in these homes? That's that's big. The other thing um, I'm hearing a lot about is uh, the apparent or what appears to be negligence when it comes to certain zip codes. You know. You know, if you live in uh, 19807, you live in <laughs> or one of the uh, other zip codes, you're going to get the attention that's needed, right? But if you live where we live, trash gets picked up. You may have half the trash on the street. And, you know, I guess the fellow's doing the best they can, but it's just a different attitude. We seem to be uh, overtaxed with our electric bills, uh, we pay more in 801, 80, uh, 805, 802 than the rest of them. And I, I, years ago, I went to the table, I found out that uh, those zip codes owed uh, Delmarva money. Well, I was asking them to forgive the debt. I don't know where we are with that, but that would take a lot off of people. So they're, they're complaining about those sort of things. They're definitely, they're definitely. Now, um... Someone may say to themselves, now, I, I'm, a, I'm an ex-felon, I can't vote, but, 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 but fe felons can vote now, right? Sure. Uh, felons can vote. Uh, and uh, I forget who, who, who got that in. It's called the box. Um, and uh, um, I think it was uh, Senator Margaret Henry. I'm not sure, but she, okay. she tackled that. And, and I do know that felons, I think they have to have their fines paid up, right? And uh, um, we're talking about uh, restoration of uh, citizenship. And um, I just don't know what the full uh, outcome. I normally talk with uh, Dwight uh, Davis and I talk with uh, some other folks uh, who, who work with folks to get expungements and, and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, uh, we did the Fugitive Safe Surrender Program and uh, we have folks to come through there, 100, one, uh, 1,743 people. And I, I was laughing. I said, look, now, now that you done turned yourself in, you got to get yourself in line to vote. <laughs> right, right. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so, Reverend Ty, so, oh, I'm sorry. You, you got so to... felons, uh, to my knowledge, felons can vote. Right, definitely. Okay, so so we got like 10 minutes left, five, five to 10 minutes left. And so I want to let you... Um, the elevator speaks in terms of why you should be elected as a uh, city council at large. And then if someone wants to donate to, to your campaign, how, how can they help you? And do you need any volunteers like passing out signs, passing out literature? Is this all you? Oh man, I appreciate you. Um, I'm talked out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I thank you, Omar, for, for your um, stewardship, your commitment and uh, allowing um, God to use you in the way that you do. No, you know, no, we, we don't take anything 
for granted. Everybody has a part. Um, as I said, um, I'm Tyrone C. Johnson. I'm running and, and desiring to be your candidate for Wilmington City Council at large. That means on September the 15th, you got to vote for me. Vote for Tyrone C. Johnson. It's Wilmington City Council at large. I'm looking at public health and, and I'm simply looking at that because we are now in a pandemic. We must learn how to live in and through the pandemic. And we have, we have to be intelligent about it. So that means that we got to be conscious about washing our hands when we come in and out of places, in and out of the house. That has to be, that has to happen, man. We have to get that message to our folks. This stuff, you know, it's, it's killing us, man. And I don't know how we get the message to our young people, but we got to get it to them. We got, we got to wear masks and we got to stop the transmission, help stop the transmission of this deadly disease. And we got to make sure we have the tools and everything we need and we got to get our children back in school. So those things are priority for me. The second area is public safety. Mm -hmm. I will be working to stop this gun violence. I, we cannot afford to lose any more of our babies, innocent babies to gun play. We have to do that. We, we just got to. Um, and, and later for all that bickering and pointing fingers, how do we deal with this in a collective way? Lastly, I'm looking at economic development. You know, what do we have by way of minority uh, participation? Um, I'm going to talk to the unions again. We, we, we did talk to them about um, them not allowing folks to get in um to the trades because not all of our people are college material a lot of our folks will do well if they were allowed to come into the elect electrician's uh um uh shop the plumber shop the pipe you know, pipe fitters and and the uh, carpenters you know that that we need that in addition to that we really need some people to um sew back into the city Used to be um, the DuPonts were here. And if you had a project and it, it proved itself um, to be worthy, you could pick up the phone, catch one of the DuPonts on a yacht, and they would have their man at the table. And their person would talk with whoever they knew, right? And they would say, hey, does it look good to you? And they would say, sure. And we got good folks. And she would give them the million dollars. Well, all that has changed, that money's gone because young DuPonts, young folks, they're not, they don't have the philanthropic will that their grandparents and their parents had. They wanna buy yachts. <laughs> they, they wanna buy Lambos, man. <laughs> so we have to find a way to encourage them to reinvest in our city. All right, let's try to do now, I'm, I'm sorry. I was supposed to tell you how you can help. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. See, and I don't do that well. I don't sell. I don't sell me well. <laughs> I, I sell other people. <laughs> I don't do well with me. You can go to my website. It is Tyrone Four City Council, uh, Wilmington City Council at law um, um, dot com. I'm sorry, Tyrone for city council.com tyrone for for city council.com that's the website you can always find me on facebook elder ty right um you can so i got a cash app hit me on the cash app it's dollar sign tyrone c johnson senior right tyrone c johnson senior um, we do need some help. I'm not taking any money from the corporate folks. Um, I'm going to my friends' businesses and I'm putting a heavy tax on, on the folks. And uh, our folks are stepping up. Uh, you know, we need uh, more signs. We need t-shirts. Folks that are willing to help can call 377-5984. 377-5984. Eight four. That's Dr. Brown. She is working with uh, Tom Waters 
and the, the team to ensure that we have enough volunteers for the 15th. Either you come volunteer on the 15th, help us get some folks to the poll, act as a challenger, uh, whatever you do and you feel you can do, we have a place for you. Now, tomorrow I want you to try to call your council person and you're not gonna get them people. Try it, just try to call them tomorrow at City Hall. You will not get them because you're gonna get their assistant and they're gonna tell you they'll get back to you. And that's cool. But when you vote Tyrone C. Johnson, Erica Badu says, call Tyrone. Do you have a phone over there? Do you have a phone over there, Omar? Do you have a phone? Put that <laughs> phone up. Look, wait, 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 wait. There you go, brother. They can use your phone. <laughs> Tell them I need to use your phone because I want to call Tyrone. There you go. All right, Elder Ty, it was an honor as always. Um, best of luck in your campaign. And um, yeah, so so we'll see each other in the community. I, I know we always do. Sir, I love you, man. Continue right. to do what you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. All right, likewise. All right, thanks a lot, brother. Take care. God bless. Okay, God bless.